Hi, Steve here. And in this Sunrise Photoshop tutorial, I'll show you how to edit Sunrise photos in Photoshop to get the best out of your bracketed RAW files, including how to blend your bracketed long exposures using layer masks and luminosity masks, along with a whole bunch of other cool techniques. Remember to like this video and click the thumbs up button to let me know so that I can keep creating more videos just like this one and subscribe to my channel for all the latest videos. If you are new to luminosity masking, then you can download my free guide on how to create your first luminosity mask using the link in the description below. This video is the next episode in my Processing Subscriber Images series. Many thanks to Ian Tullock for sending this set of bracketed sunrise photos in for me to process in Photoshop and to show you all how I did it. So with that said, let's crack on. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I've just opened these exposures, uh, each exposure into a different layer and I've just renamed them layer one, layer two, layer three, just for ease of reference. Now, Ian did send through to me uh, five exposures. So there were two darker exposures than this layer one here that I've selected as the starting exposure. Um, the reason I'm not gonna use those other two is because if we look at the histogram of layer one, we'll notice here that for this darkest exposure, when you're bracketing exposures, you want to make sure that you're covering the full dynamic range. So your darkest exposure is going to essentially be so that you can capture the brightest highlights. And in this case, we can see here the histogram of this dark layer is well within the bounds of uh, the histogram. So the, the data is kind of dropping off before we get to the end of the histogram. And that's telling us that we haven't got any overexposed pixels in this layer. So we don't necessarily need those other two darker exposures. So using this as the starting layer, what I'm going to do is blend in the, uh, well, these other two layers basically. So um, yeah, we're going to use these two layers here for the foreground pretty much. And layer one is going to be for the sky. So yeah, one thing you'll notice as I'm just toggling these layers off and on is that we've got quite a bit of movement in the sky here, obviously. So with these long exposures comes, uh, you know, if it's particularly windy, especially the, uh, the clouds are going to move quite a bit, but also the water is, um, you know, the waves are kind of obviously moving. And so the longer the exposure, the smoother the water is going to be as well. <clears throat> So that obviously makes it very difficult for us to blend, uh, well, especially the sky because the clouds are moving and completely changing their shape. So what we're going to need to do is keep the sky from this layer and then blend in the foreground from layer two and layer three. Basically the decision we're going to have to make with the water is how smooth we want it in the final image. So, you know, this, Bright exposure here is obviously a lot smoother than this one uh, in layer two, and layer two is a lot smoother than layer one. Um, we're also going to have to sort of balance that with how bright it needs to be. Um, I think I'm probably going to use layer two for the water um, because layer three, even though it's that nice smooth effect, that's quite bright. And when we, if we blend the water in from this layer with the sky from this layer, it's just going to look too bright and it's going to look a bit weird. So, um, yeah, let's just start off blending the foreground for, uh, from layer two into the sky from layer one. So the first thing I'll do is add a black layer mask to layer two. So alt or option on the keyboard and click the add layer mask button. That adds a black layer mask hiding that layer. And now I'm just going to use a white brush to, um, to brush this foreground in most of the way. I'm not using any kind of selections at the moment because I can probably, yeah, the horizon obviously is quite straight. Um, so yeah, I haven't really got many edges that I need to go around for accuracy. Obviously I will need to, uh, do something different for the lighthouse itself. So I'm just trying to blend this in as naturally as I can. And okay, there we go. 
So I have kind of brushed over into the sky a little bit, but I don't think that's too bad because that horizon would be a little bit brighter anyway. Um, so, okay, let's, let's stick with that. And now let's bring in layer three. So we're going to use mainly, uh, this layer is going to be mainly for the uh, concrete pathway and the lighthouse itself. So again, let's add another layer mask. So older option, click on the add layer mask button. And I think I can probably get away with using the quick selection tool here because this is a pretty well defined line against a very smooth background. Um, so when it's like this, yeah, that makes it quite easy for the quick selection tool to grab a, a nice selection. Um, probably could go into the uh, refine edge tool just to make sure that it's 100% perfect. I'm not going to do that for this video um, just because it will end up being a bit too long. Um, but yeah, that's what you could do if, uh, if you find that the selection isn't quite perfect. Um, so you'll see here it also grabbed this section of the water over here, which I don't want. So if I hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and then use this tool, I can basically remove that part of the selection from the selection that I've created. So there we go. That looks pretty good. And what I'll do also is just save this for future reference because uh, I don't want to have to keep making this if I need to use a similar selection later in another adjustment. So I'm going to come to the channels panel and hit the button that says save selection as channel. We'll see there that creates alpha one, which I can basically, you know, that's like saving this selection so that we can just come back and pick it up again later if we need it. So back into the layers panel. I've got the selection active still, so I'll grab the white brush again. And I'm just going to brush into the foreground to reveal layer three. Okay, deselect. Now that looks okay. It might be a little bit on the bright side. So maybe I'll just reduce the opacity a bit of this layer. Um, not sure if it's coming across in the video, but I can just see a little bit of a halo around the edge there. And that's because my selection wasn't completely perfect. Um, so, you yeah, know, you've got a choice there. You can, yeah, if, if you're doing this for real, you could either use the refine edge tool, like I said, or fix those halos um, manually afterwards, or use a luminosity mask just to, um, just to fix those halos as well. Uh, let me see if we can, I'll just show you quickly how you would do that using the luminosity mask. So here we can see we've got that, got that bright edge and yeah, that's obviously not a good thing to have there. So yeah. And like I said, like I also mentioned, that's basically because the quick selection tool didn't do a perfect job. Uh, so to, to fix this, what I need to do is basically fill that white or fill that haloed edge in with, I'm just trying to remember which way around I've got to do this. So yeah, I need to fill that in with black in the layer mask so that it basically hides that from view. So to create the selection itself, I'm going to use my luminosity masking panel. And if you're completely new to luminosity masking um, and you want to get started, then I've got a link in the description of this video, uh, which will take you to a, a video tutorial and a PDF download of a guide on how to get started creating your first luminosity mask. And then you can go from there. Otherwise uh, you can either use the panel or you know, hopefully if you're already familiar with luminosity masking, then you'll know how to do this manually anyway. Um, but what I'm going to do is create a selection that isolates that halo. Um, so I'll start off just sort of seeking for a preview here that also shows that halo so that I can then further tweak it. Um, so 
I think that was a one on the highlights end of this uh, of the bar. So now let's modify this using a levels adjustment. So I'm looking to isolate the halo. So just adding contrast in there. Okay, that's pretty good. It might might be enough. I'm not 100% sure, but let's give it a go. So I'll click OK. Now let's use mask, hide the marching ants, Command or Control H. And now if I'm right in getting this the right way around, then I'll use a black brush in here. To brush that away and it's kind of working. So the selection is just, yeah, that luminosity selection is just strong enough that it's allowing me to, to kind of brush that halo away without brushing um, you know, where I don't want to, where I don't want to brush. So essentially now that is halo free and then yeah the similar thing over here because I've still got the selection active I can just brush that halo away obviously you won't want to do this every time um, this is really just a kind of a bit of a bonus tip here for this video um, you'd want to get that selection perfect before using it unless it was a one-off um, but anyway that is how you could use a luminosity mask to fix a halo around an edge that wasn't quite perfect to begin with. Uh, let's move on. So we've done the blend now. So this is the starting point. And then we blended in the water and we blended in the foreground. Uh, so next stop would be to um, tweak any colors that we want to uh, that we want to sort of have a play with. Now, something that I find when shooting uh, sunrises, uh, especially sort of just pre-dawn, is that the camera has a bit of a tough time getting the white balance right. And even if you select a white balance, it always ends up looking different. Um, yeah, you know, when you by the time you get home, and it always seems to me like there's a little bit too much green in the sky. So the first thing I'll do is add a curves adjustment. Select the green channel and just click somewhere around the middle of the curve and then just drag the line down a little bit. So that is that is removing green. The rest of the image is going a bit purple, which might not be the desired result. So we can then either just tweak the red and the blue a little bit more. Um, or yeah, you know, we could make this adjustment and then just brush it into the sky, which looks a bit too, you know, in, the, in those areas that look a bit green, which is pretty much the whole sky and probably the water as well. Um, but actually, I think this one, just where I've where I've left those uh, curves, I think that does a good job. That looks pretty good to me. It's just a real subtle adjustment in the color there, just removing the green. Uh, so from here, we can probably carry on um, with the workflow, just add some contrast, make the image pop a little bit and to make these colors really come through. So I would typically do that using either curves or levels adjustment. Let's start off with the curve uh, with, the, with the levels. Um, and let's see if we can just bring some uh, detail out in the foreground here. So I'm going to grab this control point, just bring it towards the left. Actually, that looks quite good in the water as well. Obviously, the sky is going way overexposed here. Um, I'm just going to go crazy, actually, and really brighten this up quite significantly. And now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to blend this in successfully because it might just be too far gone in the sky. Um, but 
let me load a luminosity mask to isolate those overexposed highlights. So just a, uh, I'm going to select a one on the highlight end in the luminosity panel. And I'm going to use this mask. So that loads it as a selection. I'm going to hide the marching ants, command or control H, get a big brush on a low opacity. And let's just brush this detail back into the sky here. Now the threat is that these parts of the sky that should be bright are going to end up being darker than the parts that should be darker. Um, so this is a bit of trial and error here. It's not looking too bad so far. I actually quite like the sort of the bright, um, you know, the bright approach to this image. Sort of gives it that pastely effect. Um, okay, I don't think we're left with anything overexposed except maybe just around here. Just being careful not to sort of screw the balance up of what should be bright and what should be dark. Okay, so that's pretty good. Quite like that. So at this point, it kind of looks as if it's quite a cool morning. Um, I'm not sure if it's because it actually was or if it's just the colors uh, in the image are making it look that way. Um, but let's just experiment with a little bit of uh, adding a little bit of warmth into the image. So I've got a button in the um, in the panel here, which creates a warming filter. So let's just try that. And that's going to basically create the um, create the effect and then mask the whole thing out with a black layer mask. So let's invert the mask now and see what that looks like across the whole image. That's probably a bit too, bit too strong of an effect. So let's reduce the opacity. Not sure if, well, maybe on a sort of less than 50% opacity that looks okay. Just wondering if it looks, uh, if it would look better if it was just applied to the shadows or to the highlights. So let's delete it. And uh, using the panel, what we can do is, you know, if we want any of the effects here that we can use, uh, yeah, that the, the panel offers, or even a, any adjustment layer, what we can do if we create the selection first, then create the effect, it's going to apply the effect to that area that the selection isolates. So in this case, let's create a selection for the shadows. So a one on the shadow end here. Um, and then let's click the, uh, the warming filter now. And we should see that that gets applied. Yeah, you know, that selection gets applied directly into the layer mask of the warming filter. So that's essentially putting this effect, this warming effect just into the shadows of the image. We can flip that around and see what it looks like in the highlights only as well, just by inverting the layer mask. So we can click on the layer mask, command or control I. So this is what it looks like just warming the highlights. And I think that's probably, probably a bit better than just doing it in the shadows. I think it makes more sense. Now from here, there's probably not a lot more contrast that we can add to the image uh, generally kind of in the sky, uh, just because it is a really high contrast sky anyway. Um, maybe we could do some more with the, uh, the concrete here in the foreground. Um, but I think where we can get the biggest impact from any further adjustments right now is just by basically deciding whether we're going to go, you know, stick with this bright exposure or this bright finished look or, um, or go for more of a darker feel to the final image. Uh, so, well, let's just add a curves adjustment and let's see what it looks like if I just darken the image. Um, so 
Yeah, I think. Yeah, I like how the colors are going in the. Yeah, I like how the warm colors are going in the sky. But it is not. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, it's getting a bit funky. Yeah, the colors are getting a bit muddy. Um, so I don't know if I like this particular approach. Let's see if we can do it with a uh, with an autumn effect layer. So I've just got a shortcut here to the autumn effect. If you want to create this manually, I think I've got a video somewhere on my channel on how to create the autumn effect. Um, so let's invert the mask to bring that through. And yeah, it's a bit. Hmm. Yeah, not a fan of how that looks. So let's scrap that. Uh, one other method of darkening an image that I like to use is just to add either a curves or a levels adjustment. Switch it over to blend, uh, sorry, the multiply blend mode, and then reduce the opacity of the layer. So yeah, that's quite that's quite good there. I mean, the blacks are too black, but I don't mind what yeah everything else that's happening in in the colours. So all right, let's mask this out of the shadows now. So I'm just going to create a selection that isolates those darkest shadows. Hit Use Mask, Black Brush, Command H. Let's just recover some of that shadow detail. Okay, I think this could be the clincher. So that's it's looking really nice, I think, now. And now finally, let's add a bit of uh, bit of sun haze behind, because I think I think the sun is actually strongest, so it must just be behind the the lighthouse here. Um, so let's just add a bit of sun haze. So I've got an effect in the panel called conveniently sun haze. Now what this essentially is doing is adding a colored layer to the image and then just reducing the opacity of it. So picking a warm color uh, and then reducing the opacity and then we add a layer mask to that so that we can essentially use that as a big colored brush. So if I've got like a low opacity, so 30% opacity white brush into the layer mask now. And I just do one click there. Then that's bringing through a real subtle hazy effect just behind, or actually also just in front of the, uh, the lighthouse, but we can mask that out of the lighthouse in just a sec. Um, so I think that works quite well. Now I will just, like I said, I'll just mask it out of the lighthouse because it doesn't make sense that it would be that hazy this close to us. So over to the channels panel, come back to my saved alpha one channel, command or control click to load the selection over into layers. Now with a black brush, I can now remove this haze from the lighthouse only. And now that I've got the mask looking, uh, you know, creating that separation uh, between the background and the lighthouse, I can just reduce the opacity of this layer just to make the sun haze a little bit more subtle now. Okay, that's that's pretty good. And just for good measure, let's try an autumn effect right at the end. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, but it's always worth a shot. So let's invert the mask to reveal the effect way too strong, clearly. Uh, so let's reduce the opacity. Yeah, I quite like that. Maybe the blacks are a bit too, it's a bit too heavy in the blacks in the image. So again, let's grab a luminosity selection. 
grab a black brush and just brush it out from these shadows a bit more. And there we go. Let's see how far we've come. So this is the starting exposure. And then we blended in these two to get the exposure right in the foreground. And now with the rest of the adjustments that we've made, this is our finished image. If you like this video, remember to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel. For now, thanks again to Ian for sending these images in and I will see you all next time.